Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Buster Peace Challenge. Daylight is slowly appearing here at 6, 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. We have from a company established in 1939, although this did not come out in 1939, maybe in the early 70s, 1970s, when they're getting their contract from Barton Distilling Albertsons Canadian Whiskey A Blend. Purple and red and gold label, purple, red, and gold, similar to, oh, I don't know, Crown Royal. Uh, <clears throat> no age statement, 80 proof, bottled in Kentucky by County Line Distillers, which is one of the assumed names or alias names, at, like the uh, guy, the public relations guy on the phone agreed with me, alias names for Sazerac Company. He said, we have like 50 different alias names. Uh, County Line Distillers, uh, IWA Distilling, The Founders Company, Legacy Distilling Company, Barton Distilling, Barton Imports, Sazerac Bar bought Barton in 2009. So this is discontinued. I need to put that in my notes down here. Let me edit that. This brand is discontinued because they re rebranded it. Let me, uh, or replaced it, I should say. This brand is discontinued. This brand is discontinued. And well, what happened was uh, Super Value, this big company, there used to be a Frank Super Value here in this town, but it got replaced. There's still Super Values around. They uh, bought Albertsons. They bought uh, Jewel, Osco, and other companies. So that's in the Chicago area, Chicago, Illinois area. Um, they wanted to have private labels that would be sold across the stores, right? So you, you don't want to have Albertsons and you're selling it at Super Value or Albertson selling it at Jewel Osco or Amigos. So they, you'll notice they got rid of this and now it's on the shelves. Now Canadian Crest is on the shelves. The black label where it's got a new label now, nicer looking label. Um, they have their own straight bourbon, which is called Samuel, not TW Samuels, that's a, that's not a private label. Uh, Samuel something. It's the same bottle as Ancient Age, 80 proof, age three years. It might, who knows, maybe it is Ancient Age, just repackaged for Albertsons. I wouldn't be shocked. Actually, I would expect it. That's why I've never bought it, because I figured, well, it's a, the exact same price as Ancient Age, $9.99 a bottle. And I've had Ancient Age, so... And most people that watch aren't interested in store brand private label. I don't think so. Uh, anyway, although I do get a lot of interest from T Trader Joe's products. I think Trader Joe's is much more widespread. Anyway, so this, I bought this in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at the Albertsons on U.S. Highway 61. I think it was that location. could have been another because they have so many locations. But uh, it was on closeout, the green closeout tag for $4.99. $4.99 for a bottle of Canadian blended whiskey uh, made by Sazerac Canada, but using all these alias names. Um, let's see what else. And I never saw it again. Like they had the Albertsons American uh, Kentucky blended whiskey or blended whiskey. It disappeared after the closeout. This disappeared after the closeout. So that's why it was a closeout. Um, The cream sherry, it was uh, Krabari, Krabari cream sherry. They had that on closeout. Same price, $4.99. Never saw it again. Krabari, Krabari. Anyway, when I see those kind of deals, yeah, I'll, I'll snap them up. Because, I mean, even if it's bad, you hadn't lost hardly anything. And luckily, happily, it is not it is not bad. Now, this one was no kind of value price. This is Crown Royal Black. In the black bag, you see the black um, felt bag with a little rope and the beautiful plastic cap, <laughs> uh, shaped like a crown. This was introduced by Diageo in 2010. 
Crown Royal has had two owners, Seagram's from 1939 when it was introduced, but not for the U.S. market until 1964, 1964, 57 years ago. But uh, <coughs> Crown Royal Black, now Diageo, so let me start over. Seagram's owned Crown Royal and they created it 1939 to 2000, 39 to 2000, 61 years. Seagram's folded up. And they got their 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 assets were auctioned off, literally auctioned off. And Diageo Guinness, meaning Guinness of England, London, England, bought Crown Royal. They bought Seagram's VO, Seagram's VO Gold, and other products. Pernod Ricard bought Ricard bought the Seagram's gin very popular line of gin the most popular brand of gin in the united states of america and nab north american breweries owned by florida ice and farm of costa rica of all things they bought the seagram's flavored beers seagram's escape so that's the complicated history there jeep and foodie caleb says battle royale right and uh now did Diageo, I said this last night, that video last night went long, over 40 minutes, but people kept commenting and you hate to just blow people off because that's the whole purpose of the channel so people can interact and talk about the products. Not to just say, look at me, I have a video channel. I don't have time to answer comments from the little people. And that's the impression I get from some of these video reviewer people. They don't bother answering comments. And if they do, it's almost like it's killing them, you know. Uh, now, somebody told me they don't like you. It's you. They don't answer. I say wrong, wrong, bingo, wrong, because if you look at their channel, they, they got 15 comments and none of them answered. If, if I stop answering comments, I need to just get rid of the channel and go do something else. Crown Royal Black introduced 2010 product of the Crown Royal Distilling Company, Ontario, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It's actually made in Gimli, Manitoba. When I did the... Uh, solo review i said gimli ontario and now after i cut the video off i said wait that's not ontario i said well it's too late now i said the canadians are going to correct me and then uh shane giggy who uh is from canada said don't ridicule canadians for correcting you you always correcting people if they make a mistake i said i wasn't criticizing them i wasn't criticizing them or making fun of them at all i was or my he said i was mocking them i wasn't mocking them i was saying I knew they were going to do it. I knew they were going to correct me and say it's not Ontario, it's Manitoba. Yeah, I do correct people if they're wrong, and I try to do it in a respectful way. And I think it usually works out. Sometimes people correct me. And I say, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. You know, I was embarrassed that I got it wrong, but I mean, I was, it wasn't like some great tragedy. Uh, now, obviously, if they're commenting or something like, Hey, you idiot. Uh, you know, yeah, you get rid of those. But I don't even have to delete those kind of comments anymore. It's like these new Google and YouTube protocols. They won't show up. Like, it'll show the comment when I'm, but then you go to check and it's not there. It, like, deletes any. But sometimes it goes too far and it's deleting good comments because of keywords and all that it doesn't like. And I'm like, wait, somebody was like, why are you always deleting my comments? I said, I don't delete your comments. I agree with them. I can't control the robot. You know what I mean? The program. All right. So anyway, was it introduced in 2010 uh, uh, in honor of the royal visit to Canada, Queen Elizabeth's visit to Canada? I don't know. Probably just a coincidence. More than likely, it's a coincidence. But I don't know that. So since I don't know it, I don't discuss it. But I mean, it could have been because Crown, like I said last night, Crown Royal itself. Seagram's, remember it was Seagram's Crown Royal, 1939 to 2000. It um, actually was developed for that. <clears throat> All right. So Crown Royal has had two owners, Seagram's and Diageo. Canada, since Crown Royal was created, has had two rulers or reign, monarchs, I should say. George the sixth and Queen Elizabeth the second, his daughter. So two owners, two rank monarchs. All right.
if you look at the Crown Royal website, and then if you look at the Crown Royal Canada website, they have a different lineup. It's not vastly different, but it's different. It's not the same. They have different products. And same thing with um, um, Canadian Club. If you look at Canadian Club website and um, the Canadian Club Canada website, they'd be different. It's not the same, completely the same lineup. Now, I don't know why they do that. It's strange to me. They do that same thing with beer, like Bush Beer in America, in the United States of America, not Canada, America, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's 4.3. But if you go to Canada and get Bush, it's 4.7, I think. Strange. And then I was kind of arguing with people on alcohol eggs. They were saying, uh, oh, we don't get the real Budweiser. We get a licensed Budweiser. I said, what do you mean licensed Budweiser? Well, it's licensed by Labatt. To, they, Labatt produces it for uh, Anheuser-Busch in Canada. I said, well, Anheuser-Busch InBev owns Labatt. They bought Labatt years ago, like oh, almost 20 years ago. I said, so how are they licensing themselves? You know, you don't have to get permission from yourself to do something. Uh, now, if Sleeman makes it, different story, because Sleeman is owned by who? Asahi, isn't it? Or Sapporo? One of the Japanese companies. So, yeah, that would be different. That's a different company doing work for another company. Same thing with Sapporo in the USA. Sapo no, Kieran, sorry. K K Kieran Ichiban is contract produced by Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch in Los Angeles and in Virginia. Now, it's not the same company, so they made a deal. Oh, well. The Dixie Baseman says, Gimli as in the dwarf from Lord of the Rings. I may have to get a bottle for when I reread re those books this year. Reread those books this year. Is Crown Royal equally as popular in the U.S. as it is in Canada? It's probably more popular in the U.S.A. than Canada, I think. It's like the top three, the third best selling whiskey in the U.S.A. And it's the number one selling whiskey in Louisiana. People have done research like top selling whiskeys in each state. And in, the, in Louisiana, it's Crown Royal. In Texas, it's like Jack Daniels. In Kentucky, it's Jim Bean. Whatever, you know, it, it varies. But Crown Royal is so popular in Louisiana. And um, my friend David said, well, because black people like to drink it. And Louisiana has a high, high percentage of black people relative to other states. I said, well, that's a very, uh, I said, that's kind of like a, a un- I don't want to say uneducated statement. I mean, it's true. Yeah. But it's, but there's, you know, a lot of white people like it. I know so many white people and Hispanic people and whatever type of ethnic group they love Crown Royal. I mean, it's just a common thing you hear in Louisiana, whatever race or ethnic group they say, I'm going to drink some Crown. It'd be Friday afternoon. When I get off of work, I'm going to drink Crown. I'm going to get some Crown and Coke. So I think it could be a miss. What do you say, like an unclear view of it, that you th you're attributing it to one factor? It's certainly an important factor. Is it concerned like Louisiana and Mississippi? Yes, but it's not the only factor. Now, with Seagram's Gin, okay, or Hennessy, okay, because, yeah, there's some real ethnically connected consumption for products like Hennessy or Seagram's Gin. And they know that those companies do market research. They know who's drinking their stuff. So they're going to target the people drinking it with their commercials and their advertisements. I mean, a child can figure that out. Uh, now people might say, oh, I don't like the way this is going. I'm taking it the wrong way. Yeah, you are taking it the wrong way because I'm making observation. I'm, I'm not making value judgments. See the difference? I'm not saying this is bad or this is good. I'm saying this is a reality. Makes no difference to me who drinks it. Um, anyway, uh, but people are funny like that. You know, they're like real, um, what you say, uptight. Yeah, that's a good word, uptight. Or have what have hangups, hangups. And 
they make it makes them uncomfortable to talk about certain things that are neutral. They shouldn't make you uncomfortable. Us is a neutral topic. Okay. Anyway, on with the show. This is not going to be much of a taste challenge. I got to say because um, the Crown Royal Black has that black strap molasses type flavor. It's strange. It's almost like you're drinking dark rum. Could it contain rum? It could. Canadian whiskey can contain flavors. Uh, it's very dark. Is that because of the charred oak? Probably. If it's a new charred oak barrel, bourbon barrel, well, just be a barrel. Uh, yeah, it would make it dark like that. You know, when they pour the whiskey in the barrel, it'd be clear. Whiskey's clear. Clear, like alcohol, you know, rubber. It's clear. Whiskey is clear. It gets dark because of wood. It gets darker, the cocoa color or, or uh, tea and coffee color because of the charred oak. You say, no, they add caramel color and that also makes it darker. Yes, that's right. Most of the time they do add caramel color to Canadian whiskey, American blended whiskey, blended scotch, and Irish blended whiskey. It's the most popular, most commonly used food coloring in the world. And it is made from sugar that's browned in a pan. So how in the world is that going to make you sick? They remember about seven years ago, there was a big internet hoopla about it's going to cause cancer. Yeah, right. Yeah, wrong. Okay. Uh, think. Now, you see the Albertson seems to have that Sazerakian house style, which is the, as John and Ellie coined the term, the almond extract flavor. He doesn't like that. But I do like it. See, once again, not a value judgment. It's not he's wrong, I'm right, or vice versa. It's he doesn't like it, I do. Some people like butter beans. Some people can't stand them. I like celery. My daughter hates celery. She just can't stand it. Well, to me, that's strange. You know, like, why wouldn't you want to eat celery? But she said, oh, ugh. okay. This smells kind of like that toasted, roasted, dark thing. You know what I mean? Like the heavy syrup. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It almost, yeah, you see the Crown Royal Black? This is going to sound bizarre. But I don't think I'm very far off. It almost smells like it has maple syrup or pancake syrup in it. I don't, I don't think so. But, uh, oh, there's daylight. Hey, daylight. Where you been? And you see that big G5 tower is still flashing the red lights. But pretty soon, in the next five minutes, those red lights are going to stop flashing. And it's going to go to white lights. That's when this computer started having trouble when I, they put that G5 tower up. The computer screen would be going wild sometimes, haywire, blah, 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 all kind of interference. I said, I know what's going on. First, I thought the screen was going out, the monitor, but I don't think it is. I just think they send transmissions that are screwing it up. And sometimes my internet will drop off. It'll just click off, boom, gone. I got to restart the, the system to get it to come back on. Always comes back on. I think something's knocking it off. I thought it was the computer going bad. I don't think it is. Now, is that good to have these radio waves coming through your body or whatever? I don't know. Maybe not. Who knows? This smells like sweet corn and distilled corn, fermented and then distilled corn. It tastes like, it smells like corn whiskey. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Now we had an interesting conversation with the Dixie bass man retracted a message. Okay, is Crown... Okay, now, sometimes I retract messages and people say, oh, you were embarrassed by what you wrote. And I tell them, no, I'm not embarrassed. I, I made a grammatical error and it won't let you edit it. It's so frustrating. Like, you can't edit the, the message so then... And you don't want to look like you can't write like me. I, 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 I say people I think I'm uneducated, can't use proper grammar. So I'll, I'll delete it and I'll rewrite it, you know, with the corrections on, on Facebook, private mess messaging. Same thing. Like it won't let you edit the message. So your only option is to either leave it up and look like you don't know how to write or repost it with the correct grammar. And then people say, oh, you're trying to hide something. No, no, I. I'm not, I, I really never retract messages for that reason. 
I have, but I don't commonly do that because I don't really don't regret what I say. I might regret the tone or, you know, the way I said it, but I really, don't, usually the content, I, I say, no, I believe that, what I said. <laughs> you really believe that? Yeah, I just didn't say it the right way, but yeah, I believe it. Okay, Taze. See, I'm blind right now. I, can't, I got my eyes closed. I can't. It's really tre treacherous when you can't see what you're doing. So you, you don't want to be wrong, right? You don't want to do a live taste challenge and get it wrong because, you know, you embarrass. So um, I should say I'm embarrassed. But the blind taste test is the way to go because you can't see it, and you got to guess. And if you can't tell them apart, well, then you just can't tell them apart. When you're looking at the bottles and you're looking at the stuff you're pouring. No, that that's not a good. That's not that's not a good thing. All right. I'm gonna tell you right now, that tastes like regular old Canadian whiskey. Yeah. Is there anything remarkable about it? No, I wouldn't say so. Is there anything bad about it? Nah. Nothing bad. It's just ordinary. Didn't get any didn't get any of that almond extract thing that John and Lily talks about, though. So that's got me a little confused. So as it stands now, I'm a little bit confused. Let's go with the taste over here. And what did I drink this morning? Three cups of coffee. Very nice. All right, haha. -ha. That's the Crown Royal Black. I know it is. It's got the deep charred oak. Yeah, the vanilla, that, like I say, pancake syrup, waffle syrup. Um, some spiciness, probably from rye, whiskey. Yeah, but that, now, John's, um, Ronald Sutton, Ronald Sutton was making comments yesterday that. He was saying Canadian whiskey cannot contain more than 50% corn and it has to be 50% rye. And I said, where did you get that from? And he was telling me, oh, I got the documents. I said, well, okay, well, where are they? You know, post them in the comments because I got a lot of people telling me a lot of things, but if I don't have some documentation, I can't really go with it. See all the stuff I'm talking about here on the notes, they're documented. Like I did research, I found out. I can prove it. I'm, I'm not just like, you know, pulling it out of the air. Hmm. All right. Now, you know, $4.99 is not the normal price. If I go buy Canadian Crest, it's not going to be $4.99, but it'll be $5.99. That's the funny thing. It's not expensive. No, you can go to Albertsons right now. It'd be $5.99. Maybe it's $6.49. Maybe. It's six forty nine, but I've seen it. I saw it five ninety nine. They had the King's Square, King's Square, no, Kings Bay, Kings Bay rum, five ninety nine, gold and silver. Now distilled in Glen in Kentucky at Glenmore Distilling, Owensboro, Kentucky. You say, oh yeah, when you think of rum, you always think of Kentucky. No, I guess you don't. But it used to be imported from the Caribbean, but um. They said last year that in 2019, I'm sorry, that they were going to start distilling at Glenmore since they renovated the whole distillery. It was basically a teardown. The thing was so dilapidated. I was looking at photos. I mean, the, the barrel house <laughs> was so rotted. And, and the facility was really old, run down, and uh, all the machinery was antiquated. So Sazerac said, uh-uh. We're going to renovate the whole thing. And they brought in all this state-of-the-art equipment. You ought to look at the photos, man. It's like top-notch, primo. Well, now you got all this equipment, so let's start distilling again. So it was the first time in decades they had distilled there. They were just bottling, blending and bottling. But they say they started distilling rum. You say, well, that's just the beginning. I bet you got, they're going to distill a lot more stuff over there. Well, that's probably true. And, you know, rum does not have to be from a certain area. It's commonly from the Caribbean, right? Or South America or Central America. But there's no rule about it. It can be from anywhere. 
long as it's made from sugar or sugar cane or molasses. So, hey, 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 hey. Uh, do I oppose that? Why would I oppose Americans doing jobs in a working in a factory, American production. Of course, I endorse that. Now, so here we go. So is is the Crown Royal $27.99 that much better than a $5.99 bottle of Canadian blended whiskey? Well, $22 better? I don't know about that. Well, here, well, I'm going to say this is the Albertsons. Yeah, it is. Ha ha. Ha ha. I got it right. No way I was getting that wrong. Although I was a little concerned on the aroma, though, to tell you the truth. The aroma is not that different. All right, let's look at the comments. Do you have theories about G5? No, I don't, but I hear people talking about it. Uh, see, the the lights are white now. The daytime running lights, the blink, they blink so the helicopters and the airplanes don't crash into it. Uh, I think it's more of a music cultural influence than race or ethnicity. Rap and pop mention crown a lot. Yeah, I think that's right. Because you have a lot of racial crossover with music. So um, there's certainly a race, race, racial basis to it in, in, at its root. But uh, still, once again, I don't, I don't think it's bad. I don't think those things are bad. I don't have hangups on that. Like I'm trying to tell you, I don't have hangups on it. Some people do. They're like peculiar about it. Hello, Ron, says Maxwell. Hello to you, Maxwell, in Russia. Peace back to you. All right, so uh, question of the of the uh, 30 minutes. Okay, we have some answers. Answer, can you tell Crown Royal Black from the Albertsons? Discontinued Albertsons. Easily, easily. On, on Not on aroma, though, but on taste. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You say, well, it's discontinued. Why even make the video? Well, because it's not really discontinued. It's just been rebranded more or less as Canadian Crest. They brought in Canadian Crest, which is probably the same thing. Although, this is important, although, although, I'm not tasting that almond extract thing that John talks about. I'm just tasting wood. So maybe it is a different recipe. It's got to be because those Sazerac ones, they'd be all like almond extract. So, uh, well, okay, maybe it is. Ju they just got, got rid of it. But here's another impor important and point in port. Important point. There is a second Canadian whiskey they're selling at Albertsons now. I don't know if it's a private label, but it seems to be. Seems to be it's higher priced. It's called Canadian. Man, what's the name of that stuff? It's in a nice, fancy looking bottle, fancier looking bottle at least, and it's higher priced. It's like Canadian Reserve or something. And they got the regular size and the handle. And it was like, who buy $15 for the regular size bottle and about 30 for the, I, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm overpricing it, but it was a lot, a good deal more expensive. So um, maybe that, maybe they rolled Albertsons into that. And I, maybe I'll try it because this seems interesting. Um, I'm sorry. I can't remember the name of it. You can look on their website. They list Albertsons website is not user friendly though. It's real uh, clunky. So you can find it. The, the spirits, but they're not easy to find on their website. It's like the portals don't work correctly. Plus, they don't list the prices. They just say in stock or not in stock at the address you choose. It's very frustrating. Now, but they'll have nice little write-ups. You know, the sell sheets they got from the distillery. But uh, Walmart is good and Total Wine is good because they'll list the price, you know. They'll tell you how many bottles got left. Walmart will tell you how many bottles they got on the shelf. Two bottles left. Oh, yeah. Uh, Total Wine does that, too. One bottle left. You know, something like that. Um, $22 better. Um, I don't know about the $22. 
honestly. It's really good. I mean, Crown Royal Black is worth the money. Now, I'm not saying you get ripped off if you buy it. Yeah, if you got to pay $27.99 or even $29.99, yeah, get it. Try it. You got to try it. It's really that good. Get at least a $7.50 bottle. So, yeah, because if you get a $3.75, then you're going to be sorry you didn't get the full size bottle because you're going to like it. You know what I mean? You're going to like it and you're going to say, why didn't I buy the full bottle? So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's worth it. It is worth it. But that's not what I was asking. I was saying, is it worth the $22 more? That's the problem. The problem is not that the premium Canadian whiskeys are overpriced. They're not. The problem is that the cheaper ones, the cheapos are really good and they 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 punch above their weight. You see what I'm saying? They have these low, low prices, but the quality is higher than the price. You see what I'm saying? Like for $5.99, it should just be horrible, right? You say $5.99, that should be the worst stuff ever. But then it isn't. So it's sort of like a secret. You know, it's like the whiskey secret. Don't tell anybody because <laughs> you know? then they won't buy the expensive stuff or the mid price stuff because the, the, uh, the cheap stuff is so good. So that's really the issue there. It's that the cheapos are much higher grade quality than you would think. So I'm not going to say it's worth $22 more. No, I don't believe it is. Is it better? Yeah. $22 better? No. All right. I don't think so. No. Anyway, it's um, it is what it is. So. If you if you see this on the shelf and you might you might you might because they had lingering Albertson's silver rum on the shelves for years after the disco. They just were exhausting their backstock, probably had a warehouse full of it. And uh, but now it's gone. But they closed it out at the cheapest price they had for two ninety nine, you know, for the three seventy five. And the full size was four ninety nine. I mean, so it was gone. People going to buy it for two ninety nine. They're going to buy a bottle of rum. The 375 just because it's cheap. And so that, that was a way to get rid of it. Get rid. Walmart does the same thing. Woo. When they do a closeout, they do a closeout. They just, I think they're selling it for less than cost and they're just figuring the state isn't going to notice. And even, you know, Walmart's so wealthy. If they get a fine, they'll just pay it. You know, but uh, but I don't think any state regulatory board is going to fine Walmart. <laughs> Because Walmart's powerful and uh, they're just going to leave them alone, you know. They don't want to mess with them. But uh, they may not notice anything. So thanks for watching. Okay, here's the comment. The reason I deleted my comment was the grammar and a few repeated words. I was having trouble checking in on my phone. Oh, boy, those phones. And when I saw it, I just couldn't abide by it. Yeah. Uh, I noticed a lot of people have trouble with phones. Um when they're making comments, you know, because they're like, and um, then these, some of these applications or programs have spell check and it'll write the wrong word. People tell me that all the time. Stinking spell check, it wrote the wrong word. I'm like, yeah, it's got to be very frustrating, you know. So uh, my phone has that on there too, the, what they call predictive. I don't need it predicting what I'm going to say. All right. Anyway, so cheers to Crown Royal Black. It keeps winning and winning, uh, but they're they're not total victories. They're qualified victories. You see, it's not a slam dunk. It's a it's a qualified, but it's very good, and I would highly recommend it. And uh, Crown Royal is a winner, although it's a little plain. The Crown Royal Bourbon Mash Blenders Mash got two names. It's definitely a winner. Oh yeah, I mean that's dynamite. And the Crown Royal Black is dynamite. So got three winners so far. And something tells me when I bring in the Northern Harvest Rye, it's going to be a winner. When I bring in Crown Royal XL, Crown Royal uh, Reserve, and all of those are going to be winners, winners, winners. That company is putting out top quality products. In my opinion, their quality control is superb, really. Although I got to say Sazerac is as well. So that's it. Uh, what Canadian whiskey is going to come in next on Taste Challenges? Well, I have a wide choice. I got so many great deals. Forty Creek, best deal in history. <laughs> really the best deal in history. I got McAdams Canadian whiskey. McAdams been on the market since 1987. I've got uh, Canadian Gold, been on the market since 1962, I think. 
not popular, but it's been around nearly 60 years. People buy it, you know. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching this video production. And uh, after I do Canadian whiskey in the next couple of weeks, then we're going to be going into uh, Irish. And I got do hands, do hands. You say do hands. Oh, yeah, it exists or it used to exist. I think it's been discoded. I think the company went out of business, but Walmart has so much back stock. <laughs> you know, they must have bought a million bottles and then nobody bought it. So they were like, what's going on with this? And they, they closed it out over here. Unfortunately, they closed it out a week after I bought it. I got it for $19.99, which I thought was a good price for Irish whiskey. And then uh, two weeks later, they had it for $9. I said, look at me if I'd have waited. But how do you know? You don't know if they're going to close it out. Although those bottles were pretty dusty. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching this video production.